Now, whenever you're building a WordPress website, from the simplest to the most complex, you're going to come across times where you want to show or hide various different parts of your design for various different reasons. Built into Gutenberg or most of the block level plugins, that feature isn't available, or if it is, it's relatively basic. Today, I'm going to show you a free plugin that opens up a world of possibilities, and I'm going to give you a couple of simple real world examples where you can start to harness the power of this. The best thing is the pro version, which has a lot more features, has now been made totally free. So you get all of the pro features for zero cost whatsoever. What's the plugin called? It's Block Visibility Pro. Okay, so this is the homepage for the actual plugin itself. I'll link that in the description below so you can take a look for yourself. It'll give you all the information, how it works, there's tutorials and all those kinds of good things on the website. Check it out, there's gonna be a lot of good info on there. I've already gone ahead and installed this into my WordPress. And what we're gonna do is first of all, take a quick look at the settings and then I'm gonna show you some real world examples. So all we need to do is hop over into the settings sections once the plugin is installed, pop down to block visibility and in there are all the options we have available. Inside those settings, we've got three different sections, your general, your visibility and your block management. Now I'm gonna keep this relatively simple and show you the things that I think you should check out and make adjustments to just to make the process of working with this so much quicker. First of all, under the general settings, you can see we've got the editor options. This is where we can set up visual ways of seeing what is or has conditions applied to it. So you can enable the contextual indicators, you can set an overlay color. So anything that has, has this overlay color applied to it has some form of condition with the block visibility plugin associated with it. You can also reduce the opacity of those. So again, quickly you can visually see exactly what they look like. And I'll set some things up and then we set some conditions. You'll see how this actually plays out in the editor. We're going to set this to be 80% opacity, so it just grazes things out a little bit. And if you want things like help notices, toolbar controls, and so on, you can associate those. You've also got little help pop-ups that'll show you exactly what any of these features do. So if you're unsure, click on it, you can find out what it does. Then if you want to, if you've got multiple users on your site, you can set up what conditions are applied to what user levels. So you may want to restrict this to only admins or editors and so on. Well, you can do that by restricting block level access. You also got full control mode, which is a, a sort of, I wouldn't recommend using it unless you specifically have to. And then one of the things I always like to see is the uninstall option. So if you remove the plugin, all of the settings, all the database entries, everything to do with it are stripped out of the site. Always good to see. Next up, we've got the visibility controls, and this is where we can set up the actual panels themselves. Again, I'll show you this in a moment. Now, for me, I like to turn all of these off because otherwise you can get incredibly cluttered. But let's say, for example, we want to have the advanced custom field settings and we want to have the date and time and we want to have the query string options. Let's quickly update that and just hop over into a page. So what this does under the visibility panel in any of your Gutenberg editors pages, you'll see we have this visibility option and you can see the date and time, the query string and so on, the advanced custom fields, they are permanently enabled. That's okay, but it can get very, very cluttered and there's a better way of working. We're just gonna clear all of those and we're gonna just basically leave all of those switched off. You can also do things like hide the block, visibility presets, and so on. So you can enable the different features inside these various different sort of visibility options. So you can customize this, including additional breakpoints and so on, if you're using those features. I wanna leave all those as they are, but if you want to refine things, you can do. Finally, there's the block manager, which basically this allows you to control what sort of blocks inside the editor will have the visibility options applied to it. So you may want to have this applied to text and media, but not to your design, things like your buttons and columns and so on. So you can, if you want to, remove the ability to use the visibility plugin with any of the blocks you have or any of the groups of blocks you have in any kind of Gutenberg page. Again, hope that makes sense. It's relatively simple and straightforward. Enable what you want, disable what you don't. Just cleans, cleans things up. And that's basically all of the settings. So now we've seen how to just configure things. Let's go ahead and start creating our first set of visibility options. 
Now I'm using Generate Press and Generate Blocks, the Pro version. So I've got various different elements. In other words, little template components hooked into various different parts of my design. Now I'm working on a design for a blog layout. And at the bottom of each of the posts, we've got this never miss a new post subscribe option. So I want to be able to control where and when that's actually displayed because obviously there's going to be situations where you don't want that to be displayed. So I want to set this up to be displayed only in certain circumstances. So let's go and open up the list view. So select the container. So I select everything coming over now to the right hand side. You can see visibility is available. And as you can see, there's nothing inside there. It's everything is completely empty. We've got the plus. This allows us to choose what visibility controls we want to use. So for this example, let's keep it really, really simple. Let's go to user role. And now once we do that, we enable it. You can see underneath, we now get the settings for that particular visibility. So in other words, you can see currently this is set to public. So basically everybody can see it. And underneath you can see it says block visibility to everyone. So in other words, it's visible to everybody logged in, logged up, doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and open the options up and you can see we have some pretty standard options inside here. If you come in and just use logged in, logged out, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you come into user roles, we can then select any of the user roles that we have as part of our setup in WordPress, including any custom ones you may set up yourself. You've also got the option then to, let's just get rid of that, user roles. We can come into users and we can choose very specific users. Finally, we've got user rule sets. So if we create a rule set, which I'll come on to in a little bit where we take a look at these kind of presets, we could apply that inside here as well. Let's just do this really simple and just say logged out. And we can see we've got the option block is only visible to logged out users. Let's go ahead and update the page. Let's come back over now where I'm logged in as a administrator. Let's refresh this page and you can see that now has disappeared. We no longer have that visible while I'm logged in. Let's open up an incognito window and let's just pop that URL in again where I'm not logged in this time and we scroll down and you can see there's our never miss a post subscribe. So it's a very, very simple and common use case. Great for things like logged in, logged out buttons, register, those kinds of things. So there's a million use cases you can have for this. And that's really, really simple. However, there's an also a lot more things we can do. So let's go back. Let's go back in and let's clear that rule. Let's just say reset all those. So we've got rid of all of our rules now. Now let's just say we wanted to have something display when someone clicks a specific link or comes from a specific domain. We can do that. This is a kind of more advanced feature. So you may be running advertising and you only want to show certain things if they come from Facebook or from your own website or maybe an email marketing list. So again, coming to visibility, this time what we're going to do is we're going to choose the option for referral source. We'll select that and now you can see underneath we've got some different options. So it says referral URL contains, so we can be quite broad with this. We could just have an entire domain or we could have very specific pages or very specific links. You can also do does not contain, so you can kind of do reverse options. So you can have reverse lookups and you've also got the option to say show if there's no referral URL. So with these three rules, you can get very, very restrictive in how this displays. So what I've done is, I've set up a link on one of my sites. So if we scroll right to the bottom of the Essential Web Designers Docs site, you can see there's this link that just says WP Touch 3. It's a temporary link just so I can demonstrate this. What that's going to do is that's going to take us over to that same page we've just seen. But I need to, first of all, grab this URL. So we'll copy that, head back in, and we're going to say referral URL contains. We're going to paste that inside there. So any of the pages from that site if that link is clicked and it sends it over to this page, it will either show it or hide it based upon the rules that I've set up. Let's update this. Let's go back and refresh that page. Now, as you can see, because we haven't used that referral link, we haven't come from that clickable link, it doesn't display anything on here. So now if we come over to the link in the footer of the Essential Web Designers Doc site, click on that link. That will then take us over to that page. And now if we scroll down, you can see our banner is back inside there because the referrer is the Essential Web Designers Docs website. That now says if it's referred from there, display it. If it comes from anywhere else, don't display it. But this isn't limited to just that. One of the other really nice things about this is you can use this with advanced custom fields. 
So we can take ACF values and we can use those to check conditions against. So let's, for example, say I've got this template now set out for one of my courses and I want to either show or hide this based upon a criteria. So again, let's come back into our layout. This is my template, again, using that same kind of setup we've just seen. All I need to do is select either the container, the button, or the post meta, whatever I want to kind of set the value on. For this example, we'll select the container. Again, we'll come down to visibility. We'll click to open that up, and you can see integrations, advanced custom fields, or ACF. So let's select advanced custom fields. And now that opens up a new set of options. If we drop this down, you can see inside there, any of the ACF custom fields that I've created are available inside you. And the nice thing about this is it also groups them into the meta field groups. So for this example, we want to say there's a purchase URL. And we can now say what we want to do. Evaluate it as a user field, or we can select a condition. So we can select the condition, and we can just set what we want inside you. So we're saying that if there's a link set up, we want to show the button. If there's no link set up, we want to hide the button. So what we're going to say is we want to say has any value. So it doesn't matter what's inside there, there's going to be the link to that particular page. We can update this. We'll come over now to the template. You can see there's the login and register button because we have a link set up on this. However, if we go back out and we take a look at a course that doesn't have a link, you can see there's no button being displayed. And all I've got inside the actual dashboard of WordPress itself, I've got a custom post type. And if we go and take a look at my courses, we'll open up the Figma to WordPress one. Scroll to the bottom, and you can see there's no purchase URL set inside there. However, if we look at the design system for designers, you can see there's the actual URL inside there. So there's how easy it is to set up basic rules or some slightly more advanced rules. However, you might be thinking, well, that's great, but what if you've got multiple different rules? Well, you can stack them together. You can easily come to this block visibility, click and add additional options inside just so you can stack these on top of each other. You've also got the option to add additional rules. So where we've got this purchase URL has any value, we can click Add Rule, and you can see we can say And If, and we can choose another, in this case, ACF field. So you can build up really comprehensive different sets of rules and apply those on an instance-by-instance -instance basis. Now, there's probably going to be many instances of where you set up your visibility rules, and they could get quite complex. And you don't want to have to go back and recreate those from scratch and potentially make a mistake and then cause problems that things don't work. You get the picture. So what can we do? Well, we've got the Block Visibility Pro feature, which allows us to create visibility presets. Just think of these as groups of different visibility rules that we can apply wherever we want. Now, to do that, click the three dots, and we choose the option for visibility presets. And now you'll see we've got this visibility presets. Show block if, if something happens. Well, right now we haven't created anything. So if we click on the plus, we can add a new preset in. Give this a name. You can enable the preset and you can hide the block if you want to. Then we can come down to the control set underneath. And this is where we set up what we want to happen. So we can click on the plus. And this is, again, exactly what we've just seen. So we'll say Advanced Custom Fields. We'll come in. We'll choose the option inside here. We'll say Purchase URL. And we'll just say Has Any Value. So we just set up exactly what we've just seen. We can give this a name if we want to for the rule set. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. And we've now created our first rule set. If we want to add more, we can click the plus and add a second, third, fourth, and so on, and create them as complex as we want to. We can trash them from here. We can duplicate them if we want to. So all the options are available. Once we're happy with that, we click on Publish, and we've now created our first rule set, or our first visibility preset. We can now close that down. Let's get rid of everything that's on here. So we're going to click on the little option at the top, and we're going to say Reset All. Click on the plus, choose Visibility Presets, and then you can see all presets apply, at least one preset apply, or no selected presets apply. So again, you've got conditional options inside here. We're going to say all presets apply, and then we can click. And you can see there's our show if course URL is set. We click on that. And that's basically it. If we want to stack additional ones, we can add additional. We want to delete them, we can delete them. And we can set up how it's interacted with. Now, it's really cool to see that we've got these visibility presets that speed up the whole process of working. Now, we've seen that ACF and standard Gutenberg options are included. 
But what about external tools? What things like WooCommerce and so on? Or if you were previously a pro buyer of block visibility, you may know that Essential Digital Downloads and WooCommerce were supported alongside ACF. So what about those? Well, this is 3.0 that's just been released with ACF support and the pro features built in. The next version that comes out will include support for WooCommerce and Essential Digital Downloads. So if you are using those or you want to use those and you want to benefit from what you can do with Block Visibility and Block Visibility Pro as it used to be, then you'll have those very, very soon. Now, for me, I think this is an incredible plugin. The fact we now have the Pro features is a massive thumbs up for me. So that's awesome. It opens up a ton of possibilities. As always, though, have you found any better alternatives? Are you a Pro buyer that's a little bit miffed at the fact that it's now going free? Let me have your thoughts on this plugin. Drop them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear them. As always, all the links for everything I've covered in this video are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.